What's up, y'all? It's Crypto Kenzie, man. Man, y'all already know what time it is. It's time for Crypto and Culture. Let's go. What's going on, Crypto Cousins? It's your Bitcoin Baby Daddy here with another episode. All right, so just to let you guys know, hold on. Let's see if you guys can see. You probably can't see it. I don't want you to zoom in my face. I don't want my hair to look so stupid. But, um, so today, we're here at a blockchain event here in Tampa, Florida, in this hotel, a great meetup. And so we're gonna be talking about business and blockchain. So we're gonna see if like how business can be integrated into blockchain. So I hope you guys can hear me. I hope I ain't whispering because people are watching me and I've never done this in public before. So we don't see how this works out. But we're gonna walk up to people. We're gonna say what's up. We're gonna see what they're here for. And yeah, and we're gonna see a good ass presentation about Bitcoin and blockchain hosted by Block Spaces, a, a prominent crypto community, blockchain community here in Tampa. So um, let's just get into it, all right? See you guys in a few. You know, kind of get into it, we want to start kind of where Bitcoin came from, kind of where the past, so you guys get a, just a really general association with where it came from. So the first thing is, you know, why was Bitcoin created and by who? And I think, Gabe, you'd be a, first, uh, a perfect person to answer this. Yeah, so nobody knows yet um, who Satoshi Nakamoto is, the inventor of Bitcoin. Um, uh, although many attempts to kind of... Uh, uh, the de anonymize him have been made. Him, them, we don't know, right? Could be a group of people. Um, what we do know is that whoever created this left it to the community to develop and um, grow. So, um, and, and whoever Satoshi Nakamoto is hasn't moved a single uh, Satoshi of Bitcoin from their wallets. So, since the and, and they own a lot. Whoever this is owns a lot of Bitcoin. And what is a Satoshi? Uh, Satoshi is the lowest denomination of uh, Bitcoin, which is divisible uh, to eight decimal places. So it's a very small fraction of our Bitcoin. You can own less than one Bitcoin, by the way. You don't have to buy a whole one. I know they're like twelve thousand dollars right now. So just a lot of people don't know that. Which is a sale you'll find out in the years to come. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and Bitcoin sort of, uh, solves a long-standing computer science technology problem uh, called the double spending problem. The reason why digital currencies don't work in general this before Bitcoin was invented is because we can't, we didn't know how to take a digital thing and not replicate it when we sent it to somebody else. So, we're all used to sending pictures, right, to each other, right? Snapchats and whatever. When when we send that digital information, you retain a copy of that digital information, and now the next person has it, and it's replicated ad infinitum. What Bitcoin solved is that problem: is that now I can send a digital thing, and it leaves my possession and enters your possession. So that's kind of the magic that's happening here, and we've never had that prior to Bitcoin. And now it's changing a lot of things on how we think about digital information. Uh, of course, money, the first application of this uh, kind of uh, new digital asset, uh, tokenizing things. Um, so this is, this is the big deal. This is what is changing how we think and how we structure uh, different information technologies and secure that information. And I think one thing, Gabe, that you brought up that was really unique, that was that's really hard for people to conceptualize, is that like there's a there's a, a finite amount of Bitcoin, and that they actually exist as something because we're so used to a fiat currency that has to be tangible to be able to be something. Where a Bitcoin is not that way, but it's still limited in its existence. Like it exists, okay, but it doesn't exist in a tangible thing like you can pick up and like you can touch. 
but it exists as information that's decentralized, which we'll talk about later on the internet, but it's information that actually exists out there that is, that is uh, quantifiable, that it's verifiable, like it actually exists as an amount. So people started realizing you know, uh, how to be able to utilize this and it built exchanges where people could buy and sell uh, Bitcoin and some of these other cryptocurrencies where they would trade like an asset, basically just like stocks. Anyone trade stocks in here or own stocks in here? Two people, perfect. Um, so uh, that's how people were able to do it. And that's a common way that you see, especially in 2017, um, how people interacted with this blockchain space was simply as a tradable, viable, sellable asset that they could buy low and sell high that most people bought high and sold low. Sure, and it's something else I wanna make sure that you know everybody really understands is that, you know, you mentioned that, you know, uh, the tangible asset aspect of it. So what's interesting is, so, uh, and in the limited capacity is that all currency is digital now. 99% of the fiat currency that you have is digital. It's just numbers in a bank account. This is just a much different way of utilizing digital currency. So I want to spend just 20 seconds and talk about that because ultimately like this is a foundational truth about currency that people really need to understand and they're never going to understand the power of cryptocurrency and genuine currency until they understand how our fiat system works. So I posted on my Instagram page right now that I forget what it is. I think it's Atlas who's holding the world on his shoulders and the meme says um, the US dollar as the world and over the her, over the Atlas it says nothing because nothing is literally holding up the US dollar right now. So the way that money is made is not in a bank. So if you thought money was created at a bank, at a printing press, I hate to bring you the bad news, that is not how it's made. Our fractional reserve system says that you can bring $1,000 into a bank, and our federal reserve, which is not federal, it's a private bank, it's no more federal than the Bank of America is in America's bank. Okay, they, the fractional reserve system says that that bank only needs to keep 10% of its assets in the bank at all times. So if you bring in a thousand bucks and Gabe wants to go in there and get a loan, they can now issue them a $900 loan off their thousand, a thousand dollars of your money and their bank balance now reads that they have, I believe, $1,900 um, in their asset book, right? So they basically made money out of thin air. So when uh, Jason says that, you know, this currency doesn't exist and it's all digital, it literally doesn't exist. Like this 22, 23, 24 trillion dollar debt that we're in, it's all fake. It's all fake. None of the money actually exists. None of it's real. It's all been fakely inputted into our system through quantitative easing. And when you really realize how the fractional reserve system and the way fiat uh, uh, currency robs the people, that's when you'll start to realize the power of digital currencies like Bitcoin and the other ones that are out there. So sorry to kind of interject in there, but I think it's important for people to understand. If you don't know it, you can look up the book, The Creature of Jekyll Island. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Anybody ever heard of that book? Raise your hand. Yeah. If you've never heard of that book, it will change your life. It talks about the clocks, you know, the clocks in the 1928, the formation of the Federal Reserve System, how it was an institution set in to rob the American people. Woodrow Wilson said, after signing the Federal Reserve Act, I've done the American people the greatest disservice of anybody in my generation. The next thing I want to touch on is blockchain. Now, that is a incredibly hot word right now. I think it's incredibly misused. Currently it's just like attached to things in order to make them sound better than they actually are. And so I'd love for you, for you Rosa, to kind of tell us where kind of Bitcoin to blockchain came and then what blockchain is really about. Um, and so if you think about it, the blockchain is really just a digital ledger um, that, allows, uh, that allows this kind of open source uh, uh, visibility of transactions. Um, and it is being utilized in corporate environments now in many different ways. So if you think about... If so um, one example that I really like that really made a big difference for me, because you gotta understand is like many of you guys, if you're like anything like I was when I first got into blockchain, it's like, you know, somebody's trying to describe this island to you that's floating in the air and nothing is connected to anything that you know at all. Like there's nothing on this island that's remotely familiar to what you're used to. So somebody gave me this example. So say you're in Honduras, right? Where corruption is super high, South Africa. Let's use South Africa. Let's say you have a person who owns a farm and somebody wants to steal that farm. And let's say there's a corrupted person in town hall where all of the title deeds for the homes are being kept. Well, the corrupted person can make a corrupted deal with the person in town hall and say, hey, if you change the record that's on this title that, or on this deed for this house, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and tell them that I actually own the home. We're going to both come here with the copies of our deeds for the house. And when, they, when you pull up the verified deed, yours is going to match mine. And then what I'll do is I'll give you a cut on this deal that we're going to about to steal. Does that make sense to everybody how that can happen? That's centralized. All the information is centralized at that place, at town hall or the mortgage company or wherever that deed is kept, right? Now imagine in the city of Tampa is that everybody, or in South Africa, we'll just say this is Johannesburg. Now imagine that everybody else within Johannesburg had a copy of everybody else's title that was in there, but the names weren't on there for privacy reasons. And whenever somebody wanted to bring in a new title or prove a proof of sale to it, they had to verify that this new title that was coming in, that it matched all of everybody else's record that was all had there. And at that point, once they said, yeah, we agree that this is a good version of what this title is, or we're accepting this as the next version because it matches all the other previous versions, great, we'll stamp that new title in. And now that new title gets put in everybody else's box, and now you all have a decentralized copy of it. So that's the power of decentralization, is it takes the ownership away from one or a small group of people and it decentralizes it over a majority of people so people can't come in and bring in counterfeits. Is that a good way to explain sure. it? Is that yes. Okay. Uh, blockchain is an infrastructure level technology, meaning like it's going to be used by you guys and everyone else in the world without you even knowing it. Like Just like how any other type of internet protocols or anything like that is used, like without you guys even thinking about it because it's just, it's just so neat. Like, there's UI, UX built on top of it. There's all this stuff that's like Hey, you know, it's just super easy to use, so I just wanted to add that. Um, but do you, do you think you've changed some people's minds out here? Do you think you've in, um, educated a couple of people out here that make them really understand what blockchain is and really, like, have an interest? Sure. I think the thing I, I always hope for in things like this is just to spark interest, right? Oh. I think that's going to lead people to look for more education, to do their own research, which I always recommend people do. And so that was my goal behind that, was just to spark interest. And I definitely saw there were some minds out there that were sparked. People were asking me questions like outside of the panels, which I thought were like really educated and good. So you could tell people have a real interest in it. So just a little background from like you personally, like sure. how did you get into cryptocurrency? Yeah, so that's kind of funny. So I've done so many different things and, and, and lived definitely a more entrepreneurial life. And so I came... From way back when, I used to work in the gold and silver bullion industry, so it's definitely mm -hmm. a little bit of a gold bug. So, Ooh. like, uh, for, if you don't know anything about how crypto was started, like, I think the original people who got into Bitcoin had more of like a libertarian outset, and so gold bugs definitely lean that way, a little bit more libertarian. And so, I remember the first time somebody told me about um, Bitcoin was actually in a bar. I remember this guy was like talking my ear off about this thing called Bitcoin. He's like, "It's gonna be the future of money. It's gonna be amazing and all this stuff." And I just remember thinking like cool bro, internet money. And like, you know when you're listening to something you're not listening to something, like I was not listening at all. Um, I think Bitcoin was $28, $29 a coin at the time. So Ooh. hindsight's always 20, 20, 20. 20. <laughs> So yeah, so I remember the original time I listened to it and then what the funny thing was, that original guy who introduced me to crypto, that one in the bar, we became like Facebook acquaintances. And f uh, flash forward uh, three years, four years, however long it was, that guy's lifestyle had changed a lot Immensely. and so I, I he he reached out to me again like just kind of like trying to touch base and this time i was listening and so i kind of heard more about what bitcoin and crypto really was and why it was going to be important and so i remember thinking i'm either surrounded by a bunch of geniuses or a bunch of con artists and so i was like i got to do my own research which i always recommend to everyone do their own research and so i kind of went to the rabbit hole i put the hoodie on and 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 really did my research and when i went through all that and i really looked at it, i was like holy smokes like i'm on to something like this is going to be the future in some capacity. And so that's what I became extremely passionate about. I read every single book I could get my hands on on the subject of both crypto and blockchain. I think I've read like close to 30 books now. Um, so uh, I'm definitely an avid researcher of, of crypto, but the space is evolving so fast you have to. Yeah. Uh, and so that was kind of my birth into the space. And then since then, I'm just trying to tell more and more people about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and why it's important. Okay, perfect. So what's your next move now? What it, what it, because so now you're essentially like the PR person for Block Spaces. Yeah. So, so I do, where are you going forward with this? Sure. So, so Block, block Spaces is a blockchain innovation studio. Really what that means is they help companies build blockchains. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Bitcoin is, is built on blockchain. Blockchain is essentially an open ledger system. It can be decentralized or centralized depending on what you want it for. So really our goal is to help businesses integrate blockchain if it's an actual need for them, if it can actually help their business. Because some people try to sell blockchain for absolutely everything and it's not for everything. Mm -hmm. Like it has, it has great use cases there, it can be very wide, but it's not for everything. You don't need a blockchain for everything. And so our goal on that side of things is to help 
businesses learn about blockchain and how it can um, help to make their businesses more efficient. And, and so that's, that's the goal with that side of, uh, of the enterprise blockchain side of Blockspaces. And then we also have an education side of Blockspaces. So we actually help the general public learn about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and what it's all about and how you can use it. Um, and we actually have live events right in downtown Tampa where people can learn that. Okay. Final question. Sure. When moon? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think any, any skilled trader who looks at, at where we're at right now, we are in a bull run right now. Yeah. So when moon, I think, I think we could see, and uh, this is 100% personal opinion, I think we could see Bitcoin easily break 20K by the end of the year. Easily. I think that's a definite possibility. Now, don't ask me which altcoins, because I don't know, and if I did, I'd be on them right now. But uh, definitely, I think we could break uh, 20K. But I don't think people really realize that, like, the more people that start to realize how the money system really works, and then how Bitcoin really works, that will create such massive movement, such mass adoption, because giant companies like huge hedge funds and and these big enterprise brokers, they're already getting involved in crypto. The general public's getting actually kind of left behind at the moment. Mm. I don't want to see them miss the bus. I don't want to see them miss the train. And so that's why I'm constantly talking on social media about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because I want to help educate them because the moon's coming. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's coming to a time where Bitcoin becomes from like a store of value becomes unaffordable to the general public. So I don't want to see them miss that train. So that's why I want to see them get in now. All right, but last, oh, I already said last question. One more, let's say one Where more. can they find you, man? Where, where can sure, they Sure, so you can find me on Instagram. That's probably the most, the, the part I'm on the most, uh, just at my name, Jason Salman. The last name is S-A-L-L-M-A-N. You can also find me on Twitter under the same name uh, and on Facebook under the same name. Just be careful that it's spelled just like that. Um, I've seen a lot of fake profiles. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, really appreciate it. All right.